I'm going to talk about what is karma, what the laws of what people consider to be karma, or what I would call the cause and effect laws are. How do they work? Who's subject to them? And just how does all this tie in to commonly held beliefs about these types of concepts? Well, first of all, I want to mention that how karma is used today, um, commonly in the witchcraft and new age communities is not accurate to how karma was ever depicted in any religious system. I also want to point out that karma is most prevalent. Even the name karma has to do with the religion Hinduism. So not every belief system had that same concept of karma whereby whatever you do, if you don't pay for it in that lifetime, you'll pay for it in the next lifetime. In other words, if you are a terrible shitbag of a human being in this lifetime, the next lifetime you might be born as a dog that is like abused and then killed for meat in some, you know, culture that eats dog meat, for example, okay? Um, so that is more of the Hinduistic view of karma in an extreme way, all right? Now, how the laws work is really an energetic system. Now, religions, every, every belief system, every spiritual practice has truth in it. You know, I, at least in my opinion, in my personal opinion as an ominist or somebody that believes that everything has pieces of truth in it, and when we piece it together, we can get a clearer picture, I would say that the more accurate way of looking at it would be energy as cause and effect. So what people would consider to be karma or the rule of three, the way that it's promoted today in most spiritual communities is not accurate. And I can prove it's not accurate. Okay. Now, one thing I want to explain before I go into that is what um, can be affected. Now, what is true? Okay. Is that you can get generational curses. So let me explain this. Let's say that you are going back to the first person. You are a shitbag of a human being. You do horrible things to horrible people. I mean, to good people. Okay. And again, this is subjective. I'm just using this as an example. What you put out could come back around in the form of people getting upset at what you did and coming after you and that being a stain in your genetics or in your DNA. Okay. Now, another way to explain this would be, let's say you, like when somebody is molested, if they don't heal that and deal with that, they will continue that cycle of molestation, okay? Now, if they're not the ones molesting, they will tend to marry into somebody or get in a relationship with somebody that molests their own kids while they are sort of in this weird state of denial, this is an example of like cyclical trauma cycles, trauma loops, hell loops, or generational curses. So that is something different. I'm going to try to explain why, um, but this is connected. This is what is the most accurate example of karma playing out that I could really give. But I want to say that before I kind of go into that and explain that, that it really has to do with whether or not you are aligning to your personal energy signature that you carry in this incarnation. So what I mean by that is every, every soul, when they come down here, they have a soul contract, which by the way is sovereign. You can alter that at any point in time. Of course, as I always say, you can alter it at any point in time, but that doesn't mean that there are not consequences to that because as I said earlier, there is a law of cause effect, meaning whatever you put out is going to create a ripple and you cannot control the effect of that ripple. So it's not about like, a, it's not a boomerang where you send it out and it comes right back and hits you in the face. It's more of throwing a rock into a still pond and then the ripple goes out and touches other things or, you know, other ripples. And then that creates a ripple and so on and so forth. So that would be a better way of explaining it. So you cannot control how that ripple is going to affect you. Now, you can, you know, control how the energy that you send out affects you. 
you can distance yourself from certain energies, but you can't control how it ripples out and how it affects the collective consciousness because you are just one aspect of that collective consciousness. And this entire Cosmic Egg Universe simulation is run on collective conscious aligning or not aligned to something. In other words, if the collective consciousness believes it's true, it's true. In the sense where it's created. And so when the collective consciousness stops believing something is true, then it no longer is true in that regard. Okay. And I'm going to go in more in depth in that in another video, but I don't want to like digress too far off the path here. Point being is how, what people call karma really works is more of the law of cause and effect, which can be found in hermeticism. And I'm not saying I align to that viewpoint either, but that is the closest way I could explain it. So what you do with your energy signature affects the world around you. Okay. Now going back to what I was saying earlier about you being on a certain energy signature, you come here with the soul contract. If you stick to that soul contract and you are authentic to your energy signature. Now I'm not saying you, you don't have the sovereign will to change things. You're the one that came up with that contract to begin with. You're the one here wanting to have that experience or learning that lesson. It's your choice. Nobody else's. However, if you are not being authentic to your core soul expression and your, you know, purpose that you assigned yourself, okay, if you're not being authentic to that, then there can be a backlash. The reason is, is that you're going against your own energy, okay? So when you see people doing that, that's when they tend to get what people would call quote unquote karma, because really what it is, is an energetic reaction to them, not, you know, aligning to their own energy or aligning to a path that makes sense for their own energy. So if you are somebody, for example, that has a lot of chaotic energy and you're constantly trying to be, um, orderly, okay. You're following the rules. You're in a very strict religious order you always follow all of you know man's laws like you're very um you know by the book so to speak okay you probably aren't going to get very far you're probably going to run into a lot of obstacles things are probably going to go your way and, and not going to go your way and you're going to ask yourself well i'm doing all the right things why aren't things going my way and the answer to that is is things aren't going your way because you're not being authentic to your core soul expression. Now, if you are somebody that is supposed to be creative, okay, you are someone supposed to be creative and, and, and healing. All right. That's why you're here. That's what you're wanting to learn. That's what you're wanting to offer. But you come here causing all kinds of hell. All right you know, like taking advantage of people, like creating chaotic situations, you know, doing things of that nature, always going against the grain, then you're probably not going to have things go well for you. Things are probably going to blow up in your face as well. Okay. And if you're here and you're supposed to be balanced in these two polarities of creation and destruction or order and chaos, and you're not, or you tend to, you start to go off in one direction or the other, the, that those energies are going to clap back. Okay. So that would be the easiest way I could explain it. That's why you have certain people that seem to do a lot of fucked up shit by our subjective reality and how we would interpret pain and pleasure and right and wrong, but yet nothing seems to happen to them. Well, nothing is happening to them because maybe they are aware of their purpose that they've given themselves when they came down here and they're actually living that out. They're living out that role that they're playing within the collective consciousness because, you know, we're down, all of us are down here playing a role or up here, depending on where we came from, right? We're all here playing a role. This is like, you know, a movie. All right. This is a simulation. We're here playing a role. We're learning. We're experiencing the collective consciousness. The source of the all is experiencing reality through us experiencing all of these different types of experiences and reality at the same time. Okay. So if we're here living authentically, according again to the soul contract and purpose, we assigned ourselves. So if we're living according to that energy signature, then things will flow and we won't appear to be getting any quote unquote negative karma, or we'll seem to get a lot of positive or good karma because we are actually following that signature. We're living authentically according to our energy. So 
that that is the difference now again going back to what i was saying earlier on in this clip it is possible to to accrue, um, accrue uh you know generational curses by unresolved things now this has more to do with having a trauma response and then not dealing with it repressing it or acting it out unconsciously and then that being kind of locked into the dna it has less to do with you know your actions becoming a curse on other people but if you are doing something unconsciously or in a trauma bond cycle right then you can pass that on if you're doing things consciously from a place of conscious awareness aligned to your energy signature then you're less likely to affect your actual descendants to the same degree again not saying you won't affect them at all but less likely this is why different people have different types of of quote-unquote generational curses or hell loops are or what people would call bad karma in their genetic lineage okay also has to do with you know how much has been resolved in the shadow the collective shadow of that lineage so i'm just gonna kind of bring all of this home okay i'm not saying that people can just do whatever they want with no consequence i'm actually saying the opposite of that i'm saying that every action has a consequence and that if we live according to our authentic core selves our authentic self-assigned purpose then we are less likely to accumulate what people would call quote unquote karma or bad karma or a negative causality okay so that's what i'm saying in a nutshell now i also believe that it has to do with what we feel internally is right and wrong too if we're betraying that if we're searing our own consciousness our own conscience with ideas that are not from us as somebody else is putting on to us and we're allowing our own inner voice our own inner compass to become muted then that's another way that that happens okay and so that's part of it as well because if you are doing things that you believe is wrong internally then that is also what brings about negative karma because it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy you think what you did was wrong therefore you bring the consequence or that negative shit back around on yourself so that's why it's also important if you're doing spell work um, whatever spell work you're doing that you are making sure that you feel good about what you're doing that you believe what you're doing is justified that's why when people ask me, oh, well, you know, are you, uh, or do you serve the light or the dark? Or are you a, a good, a good uh, person or a bad person? Are you, you know, light or dark? Are you, you know, um, you practice black magic or white magic or gray magic? And I'm just like, look, I'm all about balance. I ask myself, is what I'm doing justified or not before I do it? I know deep down whether or not I am taking things to an extreme. I know deep down whether or not I'm doing something I shouldn't do. And I know that if I'm doing something I shouldn't do, I better be willing to accept the consequences of that, of that energy I'm putting out. So cause and effect. It's not, karma is not a boomerang. It's a ripple. Okay. And you can't control. Energy does not stop. It just keeps going. You cannot control the direction that energy is going. But if you are aligned to your self-assigned purpose, your core value system, your core soul expression, then things are generally going to go well for you. Okay? <laughs> that's, what it, that's really what it comes down to. So it's really about you being authentically yourself and you aligning to who you are. So I hope that you guys found this to be enlightening and darkening, you know, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> I hope that this was beneficial. I hope that it was inspiring and educational for you. Take care and shalom. Check out my website, thetantricdragonist.com, to book a private Akashic reading or any other reading. Also, Akashic portraits, consultations, shamanic journeys, starseed charts, primordial dragonfire healing, and much more.
You can also subscribe to Patreon to learn how to do a lot of this yourself through various templates I've designed. Activate Diamond Consciousness, Activate the Black Flame, Journey the Underworld, Tantric Healing and BDSM, Astral Projection and Power, Shields, Cloaks, Wards, Learning Light Language, Exclusive and Premier Readings, Soul Fragment Retrieval, Advanced Ancestral Work, Creating Your Own Shamanic Sanctuary, and much more. Thanks for your support and stay tuned for future videos.